So here's the deal. If you want to experience the benefit of working with my clinic, you have to play by the rules. Otherwise, we don't play at all whether you like it or not. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 206, and today I want to talk to you guys about the process that we follow inside of my clinic. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It is greatly appreciated. With that out of the way, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of a backstory of why I'm even talking about this particular topic of playing by my rules inside of the clinic. So uh, here fairly recently had an individual come into the clinic with hearing aids that they had purchased online, okay? And this is from a hearing aid brand that we work with and dispense inside of my actual clinic. So basically how it works is when, when they come in, we go through a consultation process just like we would for anybody, okay? So whether you have hearing aids or not, you come into my clinic, you establish care inside of my clinic, we're gonna take you through a comprehensive hearing evaluation, we're gonna go through a hearing aid evaluation to determine how you should be set up with devices and which devices you should actually be using to optimize your hearing ability. At the same time, we explain, okay, here are the devices that you should be using. If you already have devices, here's what we'll do to optimize the performance of whatever technology you have if you choose not to get new hearing aids. And you are going to be going through a 45-day best practice fitting sequence with us, as well as a one-year minimum service plan. What, what that basically means is that if once you get through a fitting sequence and you know exactly how much benefit you're gonna get with hearing treatment, and we've optimized and verified and validated everything, you have to go through a full year of after care with us, which typically comprises about three to four follow-up appointments. And at the end of that year, we do a whole nother re-evaluation, essentially additional testing of your devices and checking the prescription and all of that to make sure that when you go off of a service plan, everything is functioning the way that it should. And we've had the opportunity to train you over the course of that time period, which leads to higher levels of long-term success for our patients, even if they're outside of a service plan where they're not coming to see us as often, maybe you know one to two times a year after that point, right? But you have to work your way there. We don't just fit people with hearing aids and push them out the door, and if they have troubles, just say, hey, come and see us if you have trouble. What happens when you do that is that people end up running into issues and they don't know what to do about it. And what do they do? They end up sitting there not hearing their best, and they end up ultimately complaining that we didn't take good care of them. So this has created a situation where inside of our clinic, it's either you agree to work with us and go through all of that, meaning you go through your comprehensive hearing evaluation, hearing aid evaluation, 45 day best practice fitting sequence and one year service plan. That is the minimum to engage with our clinic. Now, if you purchased your hearing aids online and you didn't get them from an audiologist and have them professionally fit at any point, there is an additional $2,500 adoption fee to come and use those devices in our clinic. Why do we do that? Not because we're trying to rip you off, but because if everyone were to do that and purchase hearing aids online and come into our clinic with those hearing aids, we would go out of business and then nobody gets best practice care, okay? So I'm, as you can tell, I'm very unapologetic about that. So you wanna procure devices online, no problem. You either pay the fee in addition to all the other fees, right? The adoption fee in, in addition to the fitting fee and the annual service plan fee, or you just don't come to us, all right? And this is what I'm talking about by playing by our rules. So this particular individual that I alluded to a little bit earlier, purchased devices online, came in for a hearing evaluation, hearing aid evaluation, we determined, yeah, no problem. We can work with those hearing aids. Here's what the cost will be. You have to pay the adoption fee, you have to pay the fitting sequence, and you have to pay for a one-year service plan, okay? I don't care where you come from. You have to pay for a one-year service plan because every hearing aid pretty much that we dispense nowadays, we can do virtual programming of and, and make sure that we have our checkpoints even if you don't fly back out to Arizona to get those devices uh, essentially serviced or adjusted or anything like that. We can do a lot of that stuff long distance, plus, We've become very good at long distance care, so we can actually ship devices to people if they run into issues. And in that first year, we don't want them to have to pay any additional out-of-pocket expenses if we're going to be shipping devices back and forth, if we're gonna have additional virtual calls and stuff like that, okay? So this individual agreed to this stuff. So we're like, great, let's order you your custom ear molds that you need. Then you're gonna come back in three weeks, 
You'll come in, we'll completely reset up your devices that were not set up properly when you purchased them online, and then we'll put you through your 45 day best practice fitting sequence and your one year service plan. The, and we print all of this stuff out. Like we literally physically print off documents and send it with the patient. Even if they decline it, we print it off and send it with them so they can see everything that we told them and what the cost of that would be. So everybody's in agreement and in full understanding of this is what the quote is. This is our good faith estimate for you. And our estimates are like pretty much spot on every single time. So you are fully aware of all of the costs that would be associated if you come on and work with us inside of our clinic. So individual agrees, we set them up, they pay for the fitting sequence uh, right there on the spot that books all four of their visits over the course of that 45 days to make sure we dial everything in. And then when they come back in and we actually fit them with their hearing aids, that's when they pay the remaining balance due for like the one year service plan and the ear moles and stuff like that, okay? So individual agrees, they come back on the fitting day. And at the end of the fitting, we're going through the purchase agreement with the individual and the individual's like, oh, what's this? Well, that's the one year service plan. We have to have you on a one year service plan to make sure that you are onboarded properly over the course of the first year. And the individual refused to pay it. And so it's like, okay, well, your options are you can either pay for that service plan, prepay for the service plan, or you do not be a patient inside of our clinic. Okay, and, and you can pick whichever one that you want and whichever one that you want is totally fine with me because I am not going to have my name and my clinic's name and my provider's names stamped on that individual's treatment when I don't believe that that individual will have long-term success with that treatment if we were to let them pick and choose the things that they want. It's just like allowing someone to pick and choose whether they want real ear measurement because real ear measurement costs additional money. Well, real ear measurement leads to a significantly higher performance outcome for patients when you do it. So, you know, would are you okay with not letting someone have that? Well, some clinics probably are. My clinic, we're not, okay? My clinic is under a microscope inside of this industry because of all of the attention that we get on social media and with all of my content. If I were to let people pick and choose the things that they do, they would uh, potentially be dissatisfied with their level of service and then start talking about how, well, I went to go see Applied Hearing Solutions, you know, Dr. Cliff's clinic, and they didn't do really a measurement on me, when in reality, they're the ones who declined the service. And I am not willing to have my name attached to that. And I'm not willing to have any of my provider's names attached to that. Because I believe that is ultimately a disservice to the people that we serve. So in order for us to ensure the highest level of quality that we possibly can, we follow best practice protocols and we ensure that they receive proper follow-up care. So if someone doesn't want to play by those rules, then we just don't play at all, okay? And you know what? That's fine. There's plenty of places out there that will let you pick and choose the things that you want and, and say, I don't want this stuff, I don't want this stuff, but I want this, this, and this. And that's totally fine. And if they're, if they're better audiologists than what we are, and they're able to guarantee a high level of success, even though they let the patient choose the things that they want done, um, then that's fine. We're just not that good, okay? In order for me, the only way that I know how to provide care is to do everything the way that you're supposed to do it. And we've been in business long enough to identify that when we, we skip something or we don't do something, even if it's for good reason, it ultimately leads to poorer performance outcomes for our patients. And with as much um, time as we've had to realize that, we've just started to say, you know what? It's either you do these things or you don't do them. And we don't make people feel bad. Like if they don't want to do it, if they're like, they don't find perceived value in it, they literally don't have the money to be able to do it, that's totally fine. Um, there are plenty of other places that you can go to that will give you affordable level care, but affordable level care, even though, yes, we are not the most expensive place that you can go to by far, actually. Um, we're definitely not the cheapest. And the reason we cannot be the cheapest is because we have to uphold a certain standard and I am not willing to sacrifice on that standard. And I don't know how many more ways I can actually put that inside of this video. So this individual decided that the, that that service plan was essentially a deal breaker. So we're like, okay, well, then that's fine. Then, then go somewhere else to get your care from now until forever. If you decide you wanna come back because you're disappointed with the level of care that you're getting out there in the rest of the, the marketplace, you can always come back, but guess what you're gonna to have to do? 
That's right. You're going to have to go through your proper fitting sequence with us and you're going to have to be on a one year service plan so we can make sure that we train you properly to use your hearing aids the right way and to identify when problems go wrong and to make sure that after a year we get everything retested to make sure that everything is still going the way that it should be going and everybody's better for it. Until that happens, you are no longer welcome inside of our clinic, even for drop off service or anything like that. And I realize that this makes me just like a lot of my videos. If you haven't noticed, this probably makes me sound like an asshole, but I don't know how else to run a clinic in a way that gives everybody that we see the highest level of care possible unless we run it uh, uh, very strict, right? Like, these are the protocols that we have to follow. We know we have to follow them. This is why we have to follow them because it's all backed by research. And at the end of the day, our patients are extremely happy, even if they did have to spend some extra money to make sure that we did everything the right way. So let me know what you guys think. Do you just think that we're just trying to rip people off by forcing them into a one-year service plan where after that service plan is over, they can they can just pay as they go. They can go anywhere else that they want to. The hearing aids are not locked. We, we would have them functioning at their highest level of capacity. And even if they did transfer someone else, that other clinic is getting a patient who is in great condition from a hearing standpoint, which makes their onboarding incredibly easy at that new clinic. Do you just think that we're bad people for doing things that way? Or do you think that it makes sense and the methodology that we have is something that you actually approve of. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. Please leave your comments in the comment section. And as always, I'll see you next week.